Hey guys, this is Mia. Welcome back to my channel. Today I will be doing a tutorial on how to paint rosemaries, which is part of the herb series that I'm going to continue on. Let's begin this like any other tutorial by drawing out the outline first. I'm going to first begin with the leaves. Rosemary leaves are thin and long. The tips are not too sharp, so it looks more like an oval-ish leaf shape. In the middle of the leaf, I'm also drawing a line to separate the midsection where I'm going to be painting a darker tone of color later, so the leaves will have two different colors and two different shades. Since the leaves are sort of piled on top of each other, it also bends outwards sometimes, so you can also draw it out bending outwards as they are fairly thin and flexible too and when we are going to paint it later I'm also going to paint it as if it's layered lightly so on top of another I'm not going to layer it too much or else it might look a bit bulky so you can also practice drawing out the layer while also roughly compiling the leaves and visualizing it before painting. Next I'm going to show you very quickly how to draw out the flowers of the rosemary plant this is optional and because I'm just going to be painting at a small scale, you won't be able to see much detail on this anyway. So I'm just going to really roughly show you the shape, which is these really thin petals at the top and on the bottom a rounder petal with a frilly bottom. Remember that because of the small scale, it won't even be that visible, so you are even free to just paint purple dots if you decide to include it in your final painting. Another important thing to think about is the movement. There are a couple of ways you can go about this so your painting doesn't look too stiff. The first one is to direct the movement of the stem itself so it doesn't look too static and facing upright. This way you can play around with how dynamic you would like to make your composition. However, if you decide to paint it up straight first because it's a bit easier to visualize, you can also make the rosemary look less stiff by playing with the directions of the leaves and not making it so dense so leave some space and play with the curvature of the leaf so it doesn't look static and also with the length of the leaves. Now let's head straight to the colors that I'm going to be using. I'm going to have two types of green for the rosemary leaves. The first green is a mixture of terra verde, hooker's green, and ivory black to create a really nice deep and rich green color. And then the next green will be a lighter green and I'm going to mix just two colors which is the olive green and grey of grey together to mute the color a bit and make it a touch more pastel from the white of the grey of grey. For the flowers, I use cobalt violet and for the stem, I use burnt sienna. Sorry I wrote the wrong thing on the video, so it's burnt sienna instead of burnt umber mixed with a touch of the dark green mixture that we previously made. I'm going to start painting the leaves now and I'm going to paint them in different directions with different curvatures. I'm also including a bit of layers. The colors that I start with is the mixture of the light green and I'm going to start with a very thin consistency. All the leaves are coming from the stem outwards so make sure that the leaves are growing along the same path as the rest of them as you practice. After the first layer of paint is completely dry, then I'm going to take the exact same color but in a thicker consistency and paint along the side of each leaf covering half of the leaf. This will make the leaf look like it has a bit of a fold within it. Now I'm going to take the darker green and paint more leaves in between of the leaves that we've already painted and then I'm going to repeat the same shape. At this point we're following the exact same steps by using a thinner consistency first then going over it again with a thicker consistency of the dark green to create the folds. Now I'm going to simplify this so hopefully it's more visible. I'm going to take a thin consistency paint, then wait for the first layer to completely dry, then go over it again with the same color and a thicker consistency to paint half of the area creating the fold. I'm going to go back to the leaves that we've painted before and this time I'm going to take a mixture of burnt sienna and the dark green to create the stem color and I'm going to paint it in between all the leaves that we painted before. This is just a very rough painting so you can see the overall steps roughly before painting the final thing or maybe you can watch the whole video before you start painting along with it. With the cobalt violet, I'm just going to paint loosely the silhouette of the flower because this is going to be very small. I'm not going to add darker tones on it or any shadows because 
um, it will be redundant as the scale will be too small for details anyway. I'm drawing the silhouette a bit larger so you can see the shape, but for the actual painting, it's not going to be anywhere near this size. But if you want to make a larger scale painting, then I would suggest adding a tiny bit of shadow using either a thicker consistency purple, or I would actually add some ultramarine blue to the mixture and create a bit of shadows in the middle of the petals. Before we start painting, I'm going to mix up the two green tones since we're going to be using a fair bit of it. Since I'm going to be painting three stems of rosemaries, um, so I can see the overall composition of it. I'm just going to very lightly paint the light green color with lots of water so it's barely visible and I'm going to place the stems so I can see the overall composition of the whole painting and so I get a good understanding of the placement before we actually start painting. If you're still unsure about the composition, you can draw it out on a scrap piece of paper first but if you want to follow what I'm painting exactly, you can also do that. Then we're going to follow the exact same steps as we practiced. I'm starting out with the light green color and I'm using a thin consistency of the paint for the leaves but keep in mind that you're going to paint more leaves later with the dark green. So paint it sparsely so there's still a fair bit of space that you can fill up later with a darker green and also remember that the more leaves you have the bulkier and heavier your painting will look. So if you want to keep your painting light and dynamic it would be better to have too little leaves than too many. I'm going to use this green and a light consistency and paint it all across the three rosemary stems and then we're going to move on to the next step. This way when you go back to the first stem that you've previously painted, everything should be dry by then so there's no waiting in between painting each step. Once you're happy with the placement of the first layer of leaves, I'm going to go over them again with the thicker consistency of the same light green color and as we've practiced, I'm going to paint one side of the leaf darker to create sort of a fold effect. This does not have to go across all of the leaves at all times. I paint the darker green thinner than other leaves too sometimes, but if you're unable to visualize it at this point, then just paint exactly half of each leaf and it should have a similar effect.
Now we're going to repeat the steps but this time we're adding on more leaves with the dark green mixture and as the previous steps we're going to start with a thinner consistency first before layering on the thicker consistency dark green. Try to make the darker green leaves to mingle amongst the light green leaves but remember to still leave a bit of space here and there so it doesn't look too overworked and bulky. Once you're done placing the leaves, we're going to go over it again with the thicker consistency paint as we previously did with the light green leaves. But this time I also want to add a touch more ivory black to the mixture to give it more of a muted tone. I also decided to add some extra thin leaves around as if it has a full side view of the leaf. But if you don't like the look of it, you can leave this part out. And like before, I'm just going to apply the same step for the rest of the painting first before we move on to painting the stems. Step, I added some burnt sienna into the dark green mixture that we previously used to create a muted dark brown color and I'm going to paint the dark brown in between the leaves so it looks like some parts of the stem is peeking through. I decided to paint some flowers only for the rosemary at the center, but you can also apply this to all of the rosemaries depending on what you feel like painting. And I'm going to hide my flowers behind the leaf so it doesn't stick out too much. I just want the flowers to add a touch of color and interest to the painting. Last but not least, I decided to add some tiny dots around like I usually do, but this is optional. You may also add any other elements that you want or just leave it there.
and we're basically done with this painting. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you decide to paint this yourself, please let me know how it goes in the comment down below or tag me on Instagram at IG underscore Nyan Yani. I'll link everything in the description box below. Thank you for watching till the end. Happy painting and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!